Okay. This will can can now start. The class is now recording. So, uh, good evening once more. So let's dive into today's um, topic. I've uh, gone halfway in the project uh, deliverables and the documentation. So we are going to try to finish it up today or tonight, and so we can move to other things. So, last night, we stopped at um, stakeholder documentation, stakeholder management, how to use risk register to manage stakeholder and then communication action plan. So that's where we stopped last night. So tonight we are going to start from document called quality management um, plan. So this document defines the quality standard metrics and processes for ensuring that project deliverable meets standard. Like you know, the one of the key major function of a project manager is making sure that the quality meets the standard as the standard set for the project because it's not about monitoring the cost or monitoring the timeline. You must make sure there is quality standard, quality compliance. So project manager does that in as much as if you have a quality assurance personnel, he does about whether quality assurance or no quality assurance. It's your duty as a project manager to make sure that there is quality in every deliverable. So let's look at the sample of this um, document. Here we have, first you need to capture the project name. Here we are using websites uh, redesign. That is the name of this project. And deliverables here, you need to state the deliverables. New websites with improved functionalities and user experience. And quality objective meet all the functional requirements, user-friendly interface, visual, visually appealing design, free of bug and errors, and load quickly on all devices. So these are the key qualities. See here, the quality has been stated. That is the quality objective. Then you need to decide um, equally the quality control mechanisms or activity to so make sure that this quality is maintained you have to do code review design review usability testing functionality testing and browser compatibility testing and we need to fit the responsibility so is it who's responsible to do this here you can see is the see developer what developer need to do here good review functionality testing then the designer need to do design review then quality assurance um analyst or tester need to do usability testing browser testing our uh, browser compatibility testing, then documentation, design specification, functional requirement document, and test plan and test result. These are what need to be documented before this project starts and change control. 
process, you need to still put change control process in um, place. All changes must be documented in a change request form and approved by the project manager before implementation. And then the KPI, key performance indicators, number of box user fact. satisfaction rating and website loading speed these are what we need to um the kpi to measure if we have good quality of that particular project please i don't like the background noise coming into this uh, class so please sir, your voice is echoing so the next thing after the the quality management plan this document is for us to look at um change management plan like i said we have a lot of documents here to look at so i have to be fast then we have change management plan this document describes how changes to project scope schedule or resources will be identified evaluated and implemented so if there is a change we need the change need to be stated what is the change we are trying to implement like a change can be within an uh, existing system or technology we are trying to bring a new technology to the organization or we need to improve on the one that is already uh, in place that is a change you bring in a change let's look at this change this change here is implementation of new crm system they already have a crm system but they have a, they want to implement another crm system so what is the change management plan that should be used now we've stated the change then the reason for the change you need need to be stated to improve customer efficiency and data management then you need to state the stakeholders involved here we have sales team we have um, customer service team we have IT department and management team. So stakeholders from this department are going to be stakeholders within this project. Then what is the communication plan? This is a change management. So first, you need to announce the change. The change should not come to the stakeholders or the people within the, the system, within the process, using the process. It shouldn't come to them as a surprise. They, they just don't wake up and say that there is a change. A change needs to be announced, you know, before the change starts. So give them some time, make the announcement, inform all the stakeholders about the upcoming change, its purpose and benefit through company-wide email and the team meeting. So they must see the benefits we we'll call it uh, buy-in. You need to buy them into the change by trying to, you know, sensitize them about the benefits the change is bringing. You need to send it via their email. Everybody needs to receive email. If there is a town hall or organization meeting, you call a meeting where this change will be addressed. And then you need to address the training, giving them confidence that they will be trained effectively to use the new changes or the new technology coming. So training here will provide comprehensive training session for all users on the new CRM system functionality, offer ongoing support resource like uh, frequently asked questions, video tutorial, and regular update. You need to keep stakeholders informed with progress update and address concern through email newsletters or quality uh, question and answer sections 
So these are the communication plan. Then training, training plan. You need to incorporate training plan because it's a change. So develop training materials, including user guide, um, quick reference guide, um, video tutorials, conduct in person or virtual training session, tailored to different user role, offer post-training support through one-on-one -on -one coaching or help desk assistance. Then you must make provision for, you know, anticipate resistance. Some people must resist no matter how good the benefits or they must, you must encounter resistance. Everybody are not thinking alike. Some people like when they are you know, making noise or resisting anything you are trying to do. So anticipate potential resistance to change. Example, fear of learning new software. Some people, uh, they are not ready to go and start learning new technology. It takes time. You know, they don't want to move away from their comfort zone. Address concerns directly through open communication and provide opportunities for feedback i like the benefit of the new system for individual users and overall team performance monitoring and evaluation track user adoption rates of the new crm system gather feedback through survey and focus group to identify areas for improvement, measure key performance indicators related to customer service efficiency and data management, make adjustment to the training plan or communication strategy if needed. So change management is a very hot topic because a, a, some companies try to give it to a particular manager called change manager. But where there is no change manager, the BA should know what to do. Project manager should equally know what to do. So, because it's a change, is the project itself. It has to be documented. Even if like it's not the B, the project manager performing some of these activities where there is no um, change manager. It's the duty of BA, business analyst, to do most of the things here. Most of these things I stated here is the duty of the, the, the business analyst. Like I said, so many uh, deliverables to see the business analyst and project manager meet, coming together. So because it's a project and this is where the this particular document or this particular uh, deliverable is a key determinant whether this project needs to go. So the Project manager need to equally assist, making sure that there is this document. This document is in place. That is what we call accountability. You must make sure there is good uh, change management plan. So we move to another important document or deliverable called um, lesson learned document or lesson learned report. In a project, when a project kick start on, on weekly basis, you know, when I my own well, I used to combine it during read. So after read meeting, we equally do a uh, lesson learn. And if you are working in agile environment, we use daily um, stand up and uh, scrum retrospective to do that. We are not going to do that because Agile is going to be treated in a very special way. So let's look at lesson learned documents here. It summarizes project success, successes and uh, challenges and the key takeaway for future projects. In a project, we, we continue to capture lesson learned. Keep on capturing lesson learned on like weekly basis. At the end of the project, it has to be well documented. It becomes 
a very big document for archiving, it become a reference point. You know, it's one of the organizations sees this kind of document as one of their big asset when it comes to project management or project delivery. Because when new set of project leaders or project team are trying to embark in similar projects, they need to go and look for lesson learned. What are the mistakes, the former people that handle similar projects, what are their mistakes? It's a way of learning from the mistakes others have done. So this is how we do it. Looking at here, we see the project is website redesign. And on that communication, we look at the lesson here. Lesson learn is weekly team meeting. Um, we are crucial for staying on track and addressing issues promptly. So this is a lesson learned. So the action here is to implement a weekly team meeting as a standard practice for future uh, projects. So you being a project manager, reading this document, you've started picking points on what you need to do in your own project because this is a lesson learned. Then on that testing, early and uh, frequent usability testing helps identify user interface issues uh, before the launch of the project. And this is the action, integrate usability testing earlier in the development life cycle for future projects. So another lesson here on that resource planning is to is underestimated the time needed for the content creation. That is the underestimated the timing. So the action is to improve content creation time estimate in future project planning. Then here we have sources utilizing the cloud-based project management to facilitate collaboration and document, uh, document sharing. So if you are not using a cloud-based project management like uh, Basecamp, Asana, ClickUp, Monday.com, then you have to use it. That's what they are stating here. Continue using cloud-based project management tool for future projects. And here, the challenges here, unexpected browser compatibility issue arose during testing. Allocate dedicated time to browser con compati con compatibility testing in future projects. So this is a lesson learned document. It comes, this, uh, this is done when the project is closing up. So we document all the lesson we learn in a project in a document and archive it for future referencing very good um uh, document then we'll have um status reports status report this is um a regular update on project uh, progress highlighting accomplishments issues risk and upcoming tasks when you're working as a project manager like I said earlier, you don't need to be bugging the project uh, sponsor or the stakeholder all the time, trying to update them what you are doing. You produce a report on a weekly basis where you present before the stakeholder and discuss the progress, the, the accomplishment, the issues, the risk, and what you plan to do the upcoming week. So we do it in a document, we present it, and we continue to do it on a weekly basis. Maybe at the end of, uh, maybe uh, this can happen uh, by midday, every Friday. You have a meeting with the, um, the stakeholder or the project sponsor. So this is what you need to capture when you are trying to prepare your project status report. First is to capture the name of the project, 
the date um, of the this particular reporting, the project manager's name, and reporting period. Then this is the report. Here is the area to capture what are you reporting? What areas? What are deliverables are you reporting? Then these are various areas we are providing reports. Number one is website content. Number two is social media graph graphics. Number three is email marketing. And we are reporting about budgets. And we are reporting about schedule. And we are reporting issues. We are reporting what goes and what are you doing there. So under website content, here is the report is still in progress all landing page copy and blog posts completed and approved and the note here is ready for integration with website design so you've updated the 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 stakeholder or the sponsor based on this particular deliverable so this is where you are then on that social media graphic, 70% of social media graphic design and uh, finalized. I can see you telling the, the manager, the stakeholder that this you have achieved 70% of this particular deliverable. Then you tell the manager that the remaining graphic will be due for completion at this particular date. Then under email marketing, email templates drafted awaiting final content approval. Then targeting the uh, list, targeting list finalized and ready for deployment. Then when it comes to budgets, because you continue to monitor budget, budget and address budgets, you tell the manager the stakeholder that the budget is on track then monitor adjustment minor adjustment may be needed based on final graphic design course so now based on what you are anticipating you are beginning to you know highlight there is need for adjustment you don't just come and say we need that you can see you've started early, early warning then schedule schedule is timing website content slightly ahead of schedule social media graphic running behind then the note here is social media graphic team working over time to meet the revised that uh, deadline and it comes to issue Potential delay in email marketing launch if content approval is delayed. Project manager in communication with content team to ensure timely approval. So you can see any area you mention what is going on. If there is risk or issue, then you equally talk about the mitigation plan. Like this risk, you see potential delay. Delay is a risk, but you are already highlighting on your mitigation plan to address this uh, risk. The next, you need to uh, update on what to be done the coming week. So integrate website content with design, finalize remaining social media graphic, finalize and approve email marketing content and schedule email marketing launch. So you need to equally state how healthy the, the, the overall project is looking at at every point you are uh, making an update. You have green, we have yellow, and we have a uh, red so the overall project health is yellow because it's not green 
because we have some risk here identified. So at risk of minor shadow, but corrective action are in place. So that's why that's why this risk is not in red. So you need to state the level of health of this project is on yellow, meaning that yeah, there is risk, but the risk is a manageable risk, and you're already working on that. Then if you are if you are presenting a weekly report and there is no risk, then this color should be green. The overall health should be green. But if there is a risk and you are struggling with trying to mitigate this risk and no concrete plan to address this risk, then the overall health of this project should be red. So then we move on to another document called uh, meeting meet, uh, minutes or minutes of the meeting. Some people do not know how to write a minutes of meeting mm -hmm. or document it very as a project manager, every meeting you have you must be documented. You cannot say I've forgotten what happened. You need to have a plan. Whenever you're having a, a, a meeting, mm -hmm. you must plan for it very well. So this is how is going to be documented. The simplest uh, meeting minute uh, sample. Here you capture the meeting time, the meeting dates, the meeting. Um, this is a uh, year meeting a uh, uh, time and then the location of the meeting. If it's conference room, you have any company, if it's online, you must state that it's online. Then you must capture the attendees who are attending this meeting. So you must state those that are attending the meeting so that after the meeting, you must should be able to say who attended and who didn't. So then you have to capture the people that didn't attend out of the attendees those that are absent and the agenda for the meeting you then start creating the agenda what are you going to be looking at in that meeting so looking at this particular uh, meeting uh, meaning we've captured the project status update we've captured the um, bug reporting and resolution We've captured the um, user interface testing plan and then the action. So under this uh, status report, we need to review the progress on website development tasks, discuss minor delays in design completion. Then under bug reporting and resolution, UA test up presented identified bugs in current build. Developer assigned ownership and estimates estimated timeline for fixing the bug. Then user interface testing plan discuss upcoming usability testing session with target audience finalize script and recruit um participant that is the item here for this meeting the agenda the item for agenda for the agenda then you need to um provide the action items so now these are the things that are listed and this is uh, action. So you cannot just leave it open that we have this identify so many issues here in within this meeting. And action here is, you can see everything here have a due date. John Smith updates project Gantt chart with revised deadline due must provide it when everybody must make sure that whatever they are 
they are working on after this meeting must be due at so 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 date. Then John Doe fixed all high priority bug identified by quality assurance and it should be due on April 25th. Then Mike Lee finalized remaining social media graphics. This should be due on April 22nd. And Sarah Jones prepared a report summarizing usability testing, usability testing finding, and should be due on April 29th. So the next is briefly discuss agenda for the next week meeting. So when you're having a regular weekly meeting, you've already captured what the team doing on weekly basis. And this with this, you can see that everything is on track. You know what everybody is doing and when their deliverable is due within that week. So that's mm -hmm. how this helps you as a project manager to run your project smoothly. Then we come to another document called Project Closure um, Report. It's a document that formally closes the, the project, summarizes its outcome, lesson learned, and provide recommendation for future uh, projects. So let's dive into the document. The document should capture the project name, which is website redesign. The project manager is Sarah Jones, and this is the date of this report. Then under this, you see what we captured here. We captured the project objective. We captured key deliverables. We captured the outcome. We captured project budget. We captured project um, schedule, key signatories, team members, lesson learned, open issues and recommendation. So within the objectives, develop a user-friendly and visually appealing website, improve website functionality and navigation, increase website traffic, and uh, user engagement. So this is the main objective of this particular project. And key deliverables is new website launch at so, so so date. All project documentation, design, spec, specification, uh, functionality requirement, and test plan should be uh, ready and achieved. Here you can see all this is already Achieve um, archive. So then, under project outcome, website successfully launched and meet functionality um, requirement. User testing results indicate positive feedback on design and usability. Initial website traffic data showing promising trend. So you can see the outcome is very positive. Then we we'll talk about budget. You need to capture budget when you are closing your, your project is very key. You need to state how much was budgeted, original budget, and then the final budget. Because we can have the original budget, but there must be maybe along the line the budget it was uh, happened to be increased so you must take the original budget and against the final budget if there is this situation then there must be a variance so that is the variance explain the reason for the variation between the two uh budgets the original and the final then project shadow is the timing. So what is the original timeline? We need to state the original uh, timeline for this project and plan for completion. So the actual timeline, so you need to state because the original timeline might vary from the actual timeline. You might state that this project will 
finish the informals at the end of the day you find out that the project uh was finished within six months if not four months you see there is a time a, a variance a variation between the original timeline captured and the actual timeline so you must tell the reason for the delay it's very important then key signatories who are who authorizes this project the client name title then include a uh, client's um, line if desired then project sponsor if there is a project from within the organization sponsors name uh, title and include a signature line if desired then you need to equally capture team members all the people that participated in this project and the develop under the development team who are the developers capture the developer's name see here john doe developer jane smith developer then design team mike lee is a designer sarah lopez designer so here you capture all the team members within this uh, uh, project then lesson learned because lesson learned is a very big document so it is it is it's going to be difficult to capture lesson learned here so you see you can put a bullet point or you can say attached create a link where the or where the main lesson learned document should be fine or you can just put a key uh, bullet point within this uh, lesson learned then open issues is there any open issue that are not yet resolved list any outstanding tasks or unresolved issues and then recommendations suggest any improvement for future projects this is it you've documented this uh closure report and that's it that's what really um brings the project to an end when there is open um, this kind of uh, documentation then these are other documents that are very very important it's not the duty of the the project manager to create any materials but in a situation where there is a change a change is a project where are building or implementation there is need for training materials like this so you must have to make sure there is a good training material like i say some of these, doc of these documents you must make sure that they are there you must look at it and that's why i'm bringing some of these um documentation and deliverables here documents or resources developed to train project team members or end users or on project deliverables here is the topic description steps and the additional resources so you need to get all the topics where the training should be uh, training material should be de developed here is uh, logging into the new system you have to create training on how to log in creating a new project you need to create a, a training material for this. Then adding text to the project and then uploading to the file. So you must create this kind of uh, documentation for training as a guide for, you must have it so that you must recommend some of this to the business analyst or whoever is going to be in charge for developing this kind of uh, training materials. These are some of the things or the structure it should be captured. Then procurement documents. This is a request for proposal statement for work or contracts and vendor evaluation for procurement of goods or services. In a project, this kind of document should be in place. 
off because of if there is any uh, procurement that is going on is a project, so you have to be buying materials and equipment or, or software. There should be a good procurement documentation in place to be used. This is a very good example of a procurement document you can use. Here you have to capture the title, the company information, the issue date, the closing date for quotation, the project description, and the specification. And there you have um, evaluation criteria. Um, and we need to we need to send some people out of this uh, class, you know. Stop it! Stop it! Why are you disrupting this class? What is your problem? Let me grab him water now. Uh uh. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just have to remove some some people that are becoming users here, <clears throat> and some people want to let me know that they are still here. Okay. I stopped in this procurement documentation this is how a procurement the we can we can have different types of procurement documentation is not a must it shouldn't be but this is uh, a minimum standard so different company have their different way of doing documentation but this is the minimum standard for procurement documentation we all know what procurement is buying, buying of um, products for the or goods or services for the project. Then we have test plan and test cases. These are um, documentation by the business analyst. So, but I'm bringing this because project manager really need to look into this when it's happening because it's very key as well. And if there is a quality assurance, they are the people that are going to be developing this uh, test plan and test cases. So in a test plan or test cases, what we need to capture, you need to capture the, the project name, the testers name, the test plan dates, test objective, and then we need to capture the scope that need to be tested. Then we need to capture testing tools. And then we need to capture whether it's failed or is passed, every test. And we need to capture uh, the schedule. We are not going to um waste much time on this test case or test plan because during the business analysis class we are going to have time to develop a full test plan and test case that is very very um usable but this is just to have a glance because a test plan and test case is way beyond uh, this but these are some of the key things that need to be captured. So this is how a test case should look like. You must capture the test case ID, describe the test, test case, provide the steps 
for the testing and the expected result. You must capture the expected result where and we must equally provide whether a test pass or fail. Or this is how a test kit should look like. So these are very key documents for business analyst or quality assurance or a tester. This is their document, very, very key, because this is what they will be doing, more especially quality assurance person. But if there is none, a business analyst should be able to do this very well. And the project manager, you must make sure you have to review every of these documents. Once it's ready, you need to look at it and then approve. Then we have resource allocation. This is for project manager, your key documents. Detail. Details the alloc uh, this uh, particular document details the allocation of resources, both human and financial, uh, human resources, human financial and material resources throughout the project. So let's look at this uh, resource. Here we have the resources. A personnel, a hum, a, we call it human resources, <clears throat> is, a, is, a, is a big resource in a project. Then we have the task, every resource to capture their task. We, cop we capture their estimated available time, the estimated hour or time. Then the assigned who, um, yeah, uh, every <clears throat> whom every resource or every tax is being assigned to the availability of the resource, resource person, the time, the start time, and the end time. So, looking at here, the resource here is John, is a developer, and the task here is to develop core website functionality, the login, product, and browsing. And the available estimated time for this particular task is 40 hours. And then assigned to John. You, the project manager, you're assigning me this to John. And the availability time is 40 hours. So John is going to be available 100% of the uh, estimated time. And this is the date. Uh, John is expected to start, and this is the date John is expected to finish this. So, and then we'll come to another resource person. Another resource person here is designer Sarah, that is going to design the layout and the user interface. The estimated time for Sarah is uh, 30 hours and the this is assigned to Sarah and here Sarah is going to be available the full time for this work is 40 going to be 40 hours but Sarah is only going to be you know um time for sarah is 30 and sarah is going so what sarah is need to spend here because sarah have only 30 hours is 70 um 75 percent of the availability hour so this is when the tara is sarah is starting and this is when sarah is uh finishing then we have quality assurance tester and this is what the person is doing writing and executing test case cases for core functionalities and the estimated time for this particular person is 20 hours and the person is with mike and mike is doing this on part-time basis so he's not a full-time person so and this is when Mike is starting and when Mike is finishing. Then 
Here we have a content writer, create products, description, and website copy. The estimated time is 15 hours, and the person is Jane. Now, he's not a full time person, so he's a freelancer. So, we are not uh, using our standard full, up, full time work hour to judge the person because he's not uh, a full time, uh, in the, uh, he's not even working on. He's a freelancer who can just uh, do his work. He can finish his work in time, he finishes his work. But what he must finish the work within the, the the duration. And this is when he's expected to start and to finish. And then the project manager, your, your work here is to manage projects, track progress, and uh, address issue. And it's captured that you can do this within um, 10 hours in a week so you are the project manager this is assigned to you and this is you are working on full-time basis so out of the 40 hours available you only uh allocated 25 percent of the 40 hours which is 10 hours you are going to work on this so you are spending only 25 percent a week on this project so and this is when you are starting and this is when you are ending so that is the that is it for you so this is how you manage uh, or you allocate your resources you can have a copy of this or you can equally manage this in your overall project plan but mainly this is weekly allocation this can equally be captured within a project plan then we have um requirement documentation this is your work business analyst project manager should have access to every document and review every document because you are the project manager you must make sure that everything is on point when it comes to quality standard that's why you have access to all these uh, documents so this document captures and defines the project requirement including uh, functionality or functional or non-functional and technical satisfaction so this is requirement documentation for mobile app and this is the requirement ids various requirement ids here you must capture everything on id you see requirement id one to ten and we have we need to describe every requirement like here we have a um, requirement zero zero one is um user can create a new account or login using existing account this is the first requirement of this mobile application so and you must determine the type of requirement whether it's a functional requirement whether it's a non-functional requirement and you must state the priority is it high priority or is it low priority or equally you have to state the source is it a user story or is it um, just a tax so this is how you capture requirement you can see this this is the work of a business analyst business analyst should provide this document not you project manager but you should have to review these uh, documents uh, when it's ready so this is how it is in business analysis we are going to be doing this in details we need to be able to do it and we are we'll be looking at everybody uh being part of the the training will be required to produce a requirement uh, documentation like this 
is going to be some of the assignment for in business analysis. So these are key areas to capture requirement ID, requirement description, the type of um, requirement, functional or non-functional, then priority high or low or medium, source is issues or story or is just a normal tax. That is how the requirement. And the requirement ID must be, you can see the unique ID here. Every requirement must have its own unique ID. This is the document that captures this. I'm not going to be reading all the, because this is just a demo one by one. So you've seen this documentation. And the last but not the least is the deployment plan. The project manager, you must outline the procedure and timeline for deploying project deliverable into production or operation environment. What is production environment? Production environment is when a solution is now out for everybody to use. We have two types of environments in project or software development. We have dev environment, developer environment. One is building, we call it dev environment or developer environment. Then the one is out of developer environment or development environment, we call it production environment. So you project manager or the delivery manager, you must have a deployment plan on how it's going to happen. Then key stages here is, we have pre-deployment, we have um, deployment, we have post-deployment, and we have a rollback if necessary. So the pre-deployment is to prepare environment and application for deployment, and these are key activities within this uh, pre-deployment. And possibility, uh, responsibility, who is going to do this? You capture who is going to is um, both development team and operations team and the date. Then we have the de deployment. The actual deployment is on this date. You must capture who is doing it and the activities to be happen within that key deployment date. What should happen is to push the update, uh, updated application to the production server. And then post deployment, verify successful deployment and address any issue. You list key activities that need to be happen and who is not going to do this uh, verification. You can see the QA, quality assurance team and operations team and the date these are going to happen and all the activities that need to happen on that. And then rollback, rollback is withdraw that particular software or solution if there is issue you need to, you need to roll it back revert the previous when you roll it back then you revert the previous in case of a critical issue then redeploy these are various activities that should happen within rollback and who is doing that operations team and developer development team and the time and the hour or the dates if there is a rollback. So these are key areas you need to capture within this particular document. So all this documentation, this lesson note will equally be, you can see that all my lesson notes uh, is uh, within the video. You can watch the video and you can see the lesson note as well. So you can see I'm very, very much hurrying this because I have another class by uh, half eight. So, so this is all the key documentations we need to be aware of. So if you have good knowledge of all these documents listed out, then you've captured enough to get you kick-started as a project manager. So then all you need to do is to know when to use it, learn how to use it. When we map out our um, 
breakdown structure, you will see where all these documents fit in, where they are coming in. All of them are coming in in different sections within the project life cycle. So we're going to have access to all this um, in details. So this will bring to this lesson to, to an end. So next time we're going to be looking at the essential techniques in project management. So that's what we will be looking at. So you, you can see that project breakdown structure is a is showing uh, its face again because it's a big well a big uh, deliverable. It's a big documentation. It's a big technique in project management for project managers. So and. I will give you like five minutes to ask questions and then we can um, close. If you have more questions, uh, you can chat me up or you can go to the forum and put the questions there. That's why we have a forum so that when you have a, a situation like this, you cannot ask your question. You can go to the forum. I don't mean our WhatsApp forum, I mean the course portal. We have a forum in the course portal where you can go and um, put your question and then i will respond or I will, so that's how i'll be doing it so <clears throat> thank you for for those who uh paid attention i don't know why some people will always like to you know that some they don't want um, this video. I'm not pro, I'm not protecting or preserving this video for myself because I know it already. So I, I'm not making this video for me to go and watch. As a matter of fact, when I push a video, I never go back to start watching my video because I, this is something that is me that is speaking, it's me that is teaching. I don't need to go. And, but I'm trying to preserve this video for you people. For it to be uh, more mature, more professional when you are watching it. But some people will want to start uh, making, I don't want to. Okay, if you have question, let's um, just grab a few questions from you. And then the rest question you have, we can capture them in... Um, course portal when we capture them so if it's something i cannot uh, just address maybe you we'll have a session where we can talk about it then have uh, ogochuku naka present I'm not. I'm not calling a roll call. You, you are raising your hand. You're telling me present. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Okibo. Hello, Mr. Charles. Good evening. Sorry, I, I wanted to clap for you. I mistakenly raised hand. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay um jen um miracle ugochi okay hello hello okay good, good evening, evening mr Charles. can you Hi. hear me yeah ugochi I, uh, good, good evening mr Charles. Okay. Can, yes all everybody okay, can let me allow me. her speech Hello, good evening. Can I go on? Yes. Okay, so mine is not a question, more like an appeal. Um, the first time we had the class, that was the general introduction. I think we had it around 9 to 10. But now the time has been adjusted a bit, like 7 to 8. And, you know, I was just lucky to join today's class because I, I was lucky to actually get um, back um, early from work, but I, my only just an appeal. If we can just, uh, please, I don't know, please, please, please. I want, uh, Mr. Gochi, 
this is not where to, uh, I've told you I don't have time. I want to capture some questions. Why can't we be, you know, listen to instruction? These are personal issue you are bringing into this class. I've already told you I don't have time because I'm joining another class. I want to capture some question regarding this topic I've just delivered. You are telling me you, you have personal issue. Um, if you don't have any other question, then I will say thank you for joining. When you, you know where to address issues, you Pardon, have different platforms to address Charles. issues. Mr. Charles. Uh, pardon, Mr. Charles. I'm Jane. You called me earlier. As I was trying to unmute, you called another person. Okay. Because I was on mute. Can I ask my question? Yes. Okay. Sorry, sir. Uh, in a uh, project uh, management, like the first day we said, all these uh, stakeholders, and you know, like you rightly said, some uh, affected the project either financially, either because of all these uh, money, like people that have to do that well to do in a project, even though you are the project manager handling the project. When it comes to changes, especially down here in Africa, you know how we do our things. And you are trying on your side to avoid the excessive changes, which can later on affect the project. But here you have some of your stakeholders, depending on the degree. Let me use the bigger stakeholders that are, that are those that are more impacted in the project, like you said. And when they now start coming with their changes on and off, on and off, even though it was not inculcated in the project earlier on, but now they want you to now do this. Can we still do this? So because of the fact that there are the people that are still providing the money, are madam, you not supposed madam, to bend you, you to have their... You been following this? Have you their... have, uh, <laughs> madam, have you been following this class? Have you been following this class? Yes, sir. Or you just yes, did, sir. have you been following or you just joined today? No, I've been following. I have been so no, sir, not at but all. if you are following, we have addressed the issue of uh, changes. We have addressed the issue where I talk about mm -hmm. project charter, where you can use project charter to protect yourself, your project when stakeholders are trying to bring what is not in the project charter. Have I not said that? Yes. You said so that uh, you, you have, sir. That's exactly where I'm coming from, and that insisted. So you have to ignore whatever. You well, uh, there is nothing like African from. projects and the uh, European project. Project management is project management everywhere around the world, and it's the same principle we apply. So you don't allow people to. It means you are not a good project manager, or you don't know your job. So if there is that's why you need to be a professional when you know what to do at right time yes. nobody can push you around when you bring documentation where the scope of that project is captured everybody sees the scope so if there is changes well they need to be documented and if, if you like you say that they are big men if they are big men and you are working for them and they want more changes all you need to do let them know that it's not in project charter, but if they feel they want it to be done, capture it, address the impact, let them know the impact of that changes that is going to you know, impact on their timeline, is going to impact on their budget. They have to make separate budget and make amendment for your timeline. Once they address that issue, then you carry on with what they are looking for. But if they don't want to address all those, mm -hmm. then you stick to your own um, what is in the project charter. What so the if charter they want to sack you because you are being okay. a good project okay. manager, okay. well, so be it. But I don't see any organization that will sack you because you are a good project manager. Okay. So thank you guys um, for tonight. Like I said, um, if you have issues, we have, we've talked about communication, 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 method of communication, when to address some issues. When it's time for lecture after lecture, we have few periods for you to ask questions within the topic, because some people are, maybe they didn't capture some things very well, 
they want you to explain it to them very well. When they are, we have other issue, we have a WhatsApp forum where you can talk about your personal challenges and it will be addressed over there. You don't bring issues here because maybe you think that I'm going to talk to you. I will not talk to you when I don't need to talk to you. So thank you guys and um, see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.